My great-grandfather James Fraser was a lighthouse keeper at Northern Lighthouses until he retired in 1934. He worked in 12 different lighthouses across Scotland. My great-aunt Maisie was born in Somberhead Lighthouse in Shetland in 1920. My granny Isabel was born in Muckled Head Lighthouse in the Isle of Man in 1925. I decided to ask them about what it was like living in the lighthouses in the 1920s and 30s, because there aren't any manned lighthouses left in Scotland. This memory of living in a lighthouse? Uh, in the Isle of Man, mm -hmm. because I was two when we went there, oh. so I, I can't remember anything before that. Yeah. I've been, been to two others before that. Only two months old when I left Sombra, and two years when I was in Bradfree. And then, uh, of course, we were in Glachel for six years, so I could remember quite a lot about that. I left there when, we were, when I was six, getting up for seven, so I didn't go to school. Not till we went to Barnsley, because the school was too far away. But I, I, was, I could read and write, so I skipped the infant classes. <laughs> Uh, so, what's my earliest memory of living in a lighthouse? You won't remember the Isle of Man, will you? I don't remember the Isle of Man at all. Scurdy? I have vague memories of scurdiness. Very vague memories. My earliest memory, real memory, I think, is of... Um, Barnes Ness. I can remember looking, wandering around the the wall, and I can remember on one occasion pulling some of the grasses back at the wall, and I saw a little mouse running away. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> don't remember that. Um, I can remember going along from the, the lighthouse to the beach mm -hmm. to go swimming. Mm -hmm. And I remember the water was quite warm, but of course I was just in the um, the inner part. I didn't go out to the sea. That would have, I was too far, too frightening for me. I remember um, the cat. Oh, we, had, we found the cat. We, we come, came from the Isle of Man to Skerdiness, mm -hmm. and. Uh, whether they'd left it behind or what, but there was a cat. Oh. We inherited a cat, which was a Manx cat. At least oh. it, had a, it didn't have no tail, it had a stumpy tail. So, of course, we called it Stumpy. <laughs> and that came around, it came, we kept it, came around. To, we had that for years. We had it, oh, yes. And uh, had a box specially made. Um, and I can remember the, the taxi coming you know, with all our stuff. And the the cat was in the box, but the box managed to loosen one of the uh, ties. And I can remember her shooting her paw out to try oh. to trying to get. We're moving to yeah. moving to somewhere. Yes, we were moving from. We were we were moving we to oh, in the property, perhaps. We were moving. Yes, we'd probably be moving from. A Dunbar. Mm -hmm. To to Cromarty. To Cromarty. That's right, because we had to get to the train, and then we got a train. Up um, through Perth, up to Manus, and then or in Gordon, and then the boat across to to Cromarty. Hmm. Quite a journey. Yeah. And the cat had, was in the box with buttered paws. Oh. Yeah, so it would be a bit of patted butter on her paws, so that would keep her occupied. Oh. <laughs> Licking her paws. <laughs> the best thing. I think it was just that I don't remember anything worse. <laughs> no, that, that it was a it was a good life oh. for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed the the freedom of it. Mm -hmm. Your great grandfather mm -hmm. had done most of his service before before he was married before before, before he went to Sumbra, so he was never at a rock station. He was always at home. Oh. Um, because of course if they were on a, on a rock, they could be away for a month, six weeks, maybe longer, depending oh. on 
whether it was too rough to give them to get the relief. So had he done yeah, that when he was younger? It was in, yes, in, in various ones. Mm. Um, yes, that, because that. he was, what was he, 21? 23 when he actually joined the service. He joined the service, 23. Mm. And they sent him to, um, which is, and he lived in, he was born and brought up in, a, in, a, in Port Muhammad, which is quite remote. Mm -hmm. Place. Oh, that must have been lonely. Well, he was only 23 when he went, and he was there mm -hmm. for five, six years. Um, and you don't meet many ladies up there. No. <laughs> Elsa Craig. Elsa Craig. Elsa Craig, yes. So he was there for another couple of years. Mm -hmm. So, as I say, I don't think he ever got back home to Port Muhammad. Probably never saw his mother again. Oh. And he was a... Uh, he was a... Um, uh, his father had died when, uh, before he was ten. He was drowned at sea, you know that much. But um, so, um, and I think he was probably quite close to his mother. But uh, of course, I think that was. Uh, I think I, I think I have heard that he didn't even know when she died. Wow. So, oh. wouldn't be much communication. No. But you, well, he had a sad life, mm -hmm. as well as a hard life, really. And uh, when he was at he was at Fair Isle, and then he was at Rattray, at, no, not Rattray. Um, the other one on Shetland, what do you call it, Bressy. And then he came to Sumbra. Hmm. And by that time he was, um, well, he got married when he was 49. And Granny, your great grandmother, was um, worked at Sumbara House, which was a house then owned by Mrs. Bruce. Mm -hmm. It's now a hotel. Um, and uh, no running water. We had no no bathrooms, no toilets. When we went to Crawley, we were absolutely delighted. We actually <laughs> got a bathroom with a with a blue and um, indoors and a bath, but no hot water. <laughs> just just one tap, just a cold water tap. <laughs> so we had baths on wash days oh. because the outside there was the, the Bosch house, mm -hmm. which was a quite a big building with a great big enormous boiler, which you had to light a fire under to heat the water. And uh, when anyway, when the washing was all finished, it was, um, refilled with and water carried in in buckets into the, the bathroom so that we could get a bath so as we expect they're not supposed to be a bath more than once a week we couldn't do but, no <laughs> uh, and we probably all had the same bath so uh, uh, but it, it, that was an improvement <laughs> but at other places it was um it was dry closets just halfway down the garden mm -hmm. Which, uh, we didn't think about anything about it because well we no. didn't do anything else. Um, but I think anybody coming into it now it would be yeah. would be very very different. No. And of course the school was handy there too. That was so mm -hmm. property was heaven compared to other <laughs> places we've been to. Um, uh, but um, um. What was um, what was it like moving to Edinburgh after living in Edinburgh? Well, yeah, right well um, what was it like moving to Edinburgh? Well, it was, it was, it was all right. I, I suppose we missed the life days. We missed, mm -hmm. the, missed the freedom yeah. of it. Um, I went to school here for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, we, we missed, the, at least I did, I'm sure I did, miss the, because on a Saturday we would get a penny spin, literally an old penny, <laughs> and go for miles, walk for miles. Um, Nobody knew where we were, there weren't any phones or anything like yeah. that. Because there was no phone in the lighthouse either. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was no, um, of course, in Edinburgh you got shops. Uh, it was quite, quite a different, quite a different life. Oh, totally. 
course there was transfer, there was tram cars and, and buses I suppose, but um, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah I think I like the, I think I like the old life better than, yeah. than, than that. Um, the ended up. Yeah, but blah, yeah, well, scurdiness, I like scurdiness, because mm -hmm. I had a good friend there. Oh. Um, well, we had friends. Yes, I didn't. Uh, uh, lighthouse keepers uh, get moved around quite a lot, and uh, the, the information comes out. And, you, and um, but uh, lighthouse keepers tend to. I don't know what they all did, but most of them did. I think make friends with a neighbour mm -hmm. or the co keeper, and they were friends for life. Oh. And I know we we, we we were. Did you ever help with work in the lighthouse, like cleaning or anything? Oh yes, my job at, um, every Saturday was to clean the brasses. <laughs> well, <laughs> clean the brasses in the house anyway, and uh, I don't know whether I don't remember whether I cleaned brasses in the lighthouse, but everything had to be kept spotless. Yeah. And windows, and of course the, 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 that's what makes me wonder now whether all no men on who cleans the windows, who polishes the brass. <laughs> Um, and of course, the the, the men, the men, um, some like well, most lighthouses like they were, um, they were operated by. Well, it was a lens that went revolved, and and they all had a different signal. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite one flash, two flashes, or three flashes, and then black, and so the ships knew which which was which, knew where they were. And um, they were operated by by uh, paraffin, and there was a machine. We used to call it, call it winding up the machinery. So the men on duty all, all night, every half an hour in one place, I think they had to come downstairs and wind up the machinery. Hmm. So it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy yeah. it wasn't an easy job. And of course they had in the summertime. Or uh, there was the, 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 they were all white, and they all had to be whitewashed, and that was all done by the keepers. Um, so they were kept busy. Uh, it wasn't a case of just doing the job at night and then getting sleeping all day, because you, you, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, but there was quite a lot of comradeship between light, light keepers. And some of the uh, islands, the rock stations, had a little bit of land around, and they could they, they could go out, maybe be able to grow something or fish or something. But some of them, of course, were just the rock, and that was it. Once you were inside, you were inside. You never got out. And they they they, um, they had all sorts of hobbies. I mean, some people, some of the men did um, uh, knitting, mm -hmm. uh, carving, and there was always plenty of books for them. They read reading. And I think they took turns um, to do the cooking, and of course everything had all the supplies had to be taken with them, so it was mainly mainly dried stuff, I suppose. And uh, uh, I mean, anyway, how they survived, I don't know. Sometimes, um, so I think it was quite good to get the relief and come home, get home and be home for a month. And, um, uh, everybody thinks it a very romantic life, but it was in a sense. But it was it was a hard life mm -hmm. for the for the for the men and the women. But the it was a very hard <coughs> hard life for for the women. Very hard life for the women. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I can remember my mother saying to me, "Don't marry a lighthouse keeper." <laughs> <laughs> and the cooking we had.